So guys, uh, this is the material for second exam. And then um, I should be able to finish it maybe in two or three, uh, no, not two, but uh, three or four uh, lectures. So uh, this is the sec, uh, again, the second part of the exam includes the embryology and also uh, the protista. So they're not that related together, but you have to know it. Uh, it's good for your future. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. All right, let's move on. So um, this material, the, this slide uh, quickly at the beginning, I'm not too crazy about it, but there is uh, in, the, um, in the sperm, if you would, there is a head, it's called acrosomal sac, and it's full of the enzymes that digest away the surface of the egg. But that, again, I'm talking about human. I'm not talking about uh, all other animals. Every animal is different. Um, well, not every animal, but most animals have different um, type of reproduction, which we'll talk about it throughout the semester. But this one is primarily about human. So uh, here is a digestive enzymes at the tip of the sperm. And then when the sperm enters the uh, egg, only the nucleus, as you know, enters the egg, but the mitochondria right here, all of that mitochondria is left behind. So mitochondria does not enter uh, the egg. So to make a long story short, the mitochondria that you have, I have, is from our mother. We do not inherit our father's mitochondria. Okay. So, and the DNA also in the mitochondria, as you studied in uh, bio one, um, all of that DNA is maternal DNA, not paternal DNA. Anyhow, so sperm enters the egg. Then, uh, as you know, sperm is a gamete. I talked about that. Sperm. Okay, sperm is a gamete. An egg is a gamete. They come together and form a zygote. This is called zygote, which you will see it later on. Uh, it's a fertilized egg zygote. Uh, and that the name of the process is called fertilization right here gamete formation by process of um, uh, meiosis. You all know that uh, through the process of meiosis, gametes are formed, sperm and egg. And then by the process of fertilization, they come together, sperm. Sperm comes to the egg. And then uh, what else? Um, sperm and egg are made in gonads. Quick. Gonad. Uh, go, ah, oh, come on, I'm sorry. That. When I was in Mississippi State for one semester, um, anyhow, uh, I joined the flag football team and the flag football team name was Nads. And I said, what the heck Nads mean? They said, Amir, you'll find out, you'll find out, you'll find out in the field. So I was living in a dormitory. So I went uh, to the field and then started playing. You all know what flag football is. And <laughs> I saw these guys and girls standing next to the line and cheering us, go Nat, go Nat, go Nat. I said, ah, I get it now. So the um, sperm and egg are produced by gonads. Ovary and testes are gonads. Uh, in plants, anther, uh, those of you who are taking botany or you know, that's a gonad also. So anyhow, uh, sperm and egg form the zygote. Zygote undergo mitosis, become two cells. Two cells undergo mitosis, becomes um, four cells. Four cells undergo mitosis, become eight cells, and so on and so forth. And the name of that process is called cleavage. You know, scientists do not like to call it mitosis. So my uh, cleavage is a type of mitosis, if you would. And then the gastrula is, well, you have morula, and then you have gastrula, and then organogenesis, formation of the organ, and uh, growth, all of that, we'll talk about it. Reproductive main events, gamete formation uh, by gonads, okay, we talked about it, fertilization, uh, the process of sperm coming to the uh, egg, and uh, cleavage, okay, that cleavage, I'll give you a bit of definitions when one, that zygote, that one uh, fertilized egg becomes two, then that is called a cleavage. When two cells become four cells, that's a cleavage, okay? So anyhow, 
And I'll give you a good definition for gastrulation. When you have a ball of cells and the cells invaginate, go inward from one end, okay? That is called gastrulation. Invagination, but that's called gastrula. You will see a picture of it. And that's called gastrulation. Neurulation is when um, you have a neural plate and then the uh, formation of the neurons and the brain, all of that. Organogenesis, formation of, you all know what genesis means. It means formation on your prefix suffixes. And organ, it means formation of the organs. And then finally, growth is when uh, the animal start sprouting, becoming uh, bigger and grow. Embryology, fertilization, I'll talk about that. Zygote is fertilized egg. Parthenogenesis, some animals, they do not need the sperm to fertilize the egg. Just the egg becomes an, a complete organism. We have that in salamanders. We have that in frogs, some frogs. We have it in uh, some fishes. Oh, my. Uh, so anyhow, and arthropods and other organisms, yes, we have them. So that is called, uh, you will see it in case of rotifer. I don't know if you guys are to be rotifer or not. That term will come up in uh, when we talk about rotifer. Um, so parthenogenesis, it means an unfertilized egg become a complete organism. Okay. So... Uh, rotifers, crustaceans, here, I'm fishes, desert, deserts, etc., etc., etc. What is cleavage? Cleavage is the process of, here we go. I gave you the definition of a cleavage, is a process of nucleus and cell division in zygote. Okay, that's called cleavage. Uh, types of cleavage, there are four types of cleavage radial holoblastic, and I will talk about them spiral holoblastic. Uh, discoidal meroblastic, and there is a couple more uh, the rotational. There is one more, sorry. There is rotational holoblastic. And then what does holoblastic and meroblastic? Holoblastic, it means complete. When the entire zygote divides, it becomes two, okay? That is called holoblastic, and two becomes four. But if they have a thick yolk, what happens? And you will see it here in a minute. If they have a thick yolk only... Uh, this much happens, okay? The cleavage goes through this much, and that is called meroblastic. Holoblastic is when the entire um, zygote undergo cleavage, okay? So cleavage and early development animal, uh, veget okay, this is something you studied in uh, Bio 1, at least I mentioned it in Bio 1, and then uh, so... I'm revisiting it, uh, making uh, the information complete for you. So what happens, an animal uh, vegetal axis is visible on the embryo before the cleavage begins. So the vegetal pole is formed by the uh, by presence of yolk and, uh, at, uh, at, uh, at only one end, and then you have animal pole. Okay, vegetal pole and animal pole the region containing mostly cytoplasm, okay? Uh, so, the, and you remember we talked about this in bio one, the region that contains most of the cytoplasm, quickly, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but where the cytoplasm is in bio one, there's a lot of, the cytoplasm is right here. So there's a lot of enzymes in the cytoplasm and that's where the cell divisions and influence the next cell division and so on and so forth. I talked about it in bio one and that's at the um, animal pole. The vegetal pole is where the yolk is and there is not much enzymes there. It's just full of nutrient for the embryo, okay? So, and then you will see when I talk about uh, the cleavage is horizontal or vertical yeah, based on the animal pole and vegetal pole, then the cleavage is horizontal or vertical. You will see that uh, later on. So this piece of information here comes in handy later on when I talk about the different types of uh, cleavage. Remember spiral cleavage, rotational cleavage, uh, uh, discoidal, and so on and so forth. There were four of them. There's one more coming up. Established polarities, yes. Okay, so 
this way, one end of the egg is a fertilized egg is uh, animal pole, and the other one is vegetal pole. Vegetal pole does not go under division much, but animal pole is undergoing uh, division. Polarity is in an embryo. Okay, so here is what do I have in here? In rotational radial holoblastic cleavage, it means the whole cell, the whole zygote is dividing like this. Okay, so and then two cells become four cells, four cells becomes eight, eight becomes 16, 16 become 32. Then you have a ball of cells, which inside of them is full of cells, and that is called morula. Okay, so then that is holoblastic. And remember, I talked about meroblastic, uh, mesolethetol. Uh, where it is? They didn't mention it in here. But this would be marrow plastic. Okay, we talked about this. So there is a good amount of yolk down here, right here. So the cell division of, uh, happens up to here. The cell divisions are happening up to here. It does not go all the way through the yolk. Later on, it does. Okay, but right now it doesn't. So that is called uh, a, a meso lecithal egg or uh, meroblastic cleavage. The holoblastic spiral, um, and I will talk about it. Um, yeah, isolecithal, it means they have the same amount of yolk and yeah, you mentioned isolecithal. I'll go over those uh, lecithals uh, in a minute, hang on. Uh, but uh, first let's talk about this uh, holoblastic and meroblastic uh, cleavage. So we talked about that uh, a little bit. Then I will come back. Spiral cleavage, here is the definition of spiral cleavage. The first two planes of the cleavage are um, vertical and produce blastomeres of equal size. Blastomere, it means this cell and that cell are called a blastomere. Each individual cell, when the division is occurring, is called blastomere, okay? This is your zygote, you guys and sperm enters the egg, right? And then divides two cells, four cells, eight cells. So what does it say? The first, uh, the two planes of vertical, so this is vertical and vertical. And how do you know this is a sphere, a mere, this is a sphere thing, you know, the zygote sphere. How do you know it's vertical? Remember, it goes back to vegetal and animal pole. Okay, so it goes back there. The third cleavage is horizontal. So the first two is, and the third cleavage is horizontal, like this, like that. Let's see that. Okay. And then, uh, and the blastomeres are unequal. So the blastomeres are unequal. Tip of my pen is not anything that let me, maybe I should change. Okay, so anyhow, and then you have plants, should and we'll, I'll find an example of those. Please, please, please make sure you know the examples. Mollusks, mollusks, uh, you get familiar with them. You're talking about snail, uh, clam, octopus, um, uh, squids. Those are all mollusks. And you've heard of those animals before in your life. You probably have, heard, have, not, have not heard of mollusks, but here they are. I, I already mentioned what they are. And annelids, it would be earthworm. Um, uh, earthworm, um, what else? It would be um, leeches. I just want to think of some animals that you're familiar with. Earthworm and leeches are uh, annelids. Right there. Okay, let's move on. So radial cleavage, these two are most common in animal kingdom, radial cleavage and spiral cleavage, right? You will see it uh, for the rest of semester. Uh, the first two cleavage are horizontal and produce equal blastomeres. The third plane of cleavage is also horizontal. So horizontal, this is a cleavage. So it would happen like this. And then the next one is also horizontal. Okay, so you probably, well, you probably have something like that. Okay, but anyhow. Let's see what it says. Here is a picture, uh, radial holoblastic. And uh, what happens, you do have um, radial holoblastic. The first one, they are showing it horizontal, but uh, 
the reason is horizontal because animal pole is here and animal pole is here. That's why it's horizontal. It's not vertical. I, I twisted. Maybe you should have said that. animal pole is here and animal pole is here. So horizontal. They did not draw the picture uh, the way I want it to be. But here, let me draw it for you guys. So here, from here, it goes to you have two horizontal. You see how I draw it? Uh, I'm sorry, I draw it vertical again. Uh, right there. Okay, that's horizontal. And then animal pole there, animal pole here, based on that. Okay, then the next one, so you have two like that. The next one is also horizontal, like that. Okay, so animal pole here, animal pole here, animal pole here, animal pole here. And that's why, um, and then they are, uh, and they are unequal, um, the horizontal and they are unequal, uh, the blasting years are unequal. Example of those starfish, you are familiar with starfish and frog, okay? Uh, rotational, that's in case of human. Uh, the second cleavage, uh, one pair of blasting years coming in a right angle, uh, right here, so it's in an angle, Okay, right here, they are in an angle, and that's why it's not horizontal, it's not vertical, it's just in an angle, okay? And that would be rotational cleavage, and a human is an example of that. Here is what we have in the lab. Uh, this is for starfish, uh, the model of starfish. Here is a zygote. Somebody took the two cells in the lab. I guess they are hanging it from the truck, you know, I don't know who to pick it. I'm accusing somebody, but somebody pick it. But we had it to, we had it to um, uh, sell. And here's a four cells, eight cells. I never ask you these in the exam, but I will ask you this, that would be more you love. Okay, then this one would be blast Sheila. And then this one, these two would be your gas Sheila. So that would be your gastrula, morula, and uh, blastula stages that you should know. And I will talk about it. Discoidal, okay. The fourth type of cleavage, the fourth type of cleavage is discoidal. The uh, cleavage is restricted to a small disc at one end of the embryo. For example, birds right here. So they have a thick amount of yolk. So the cleavage is occurring right here, okay. And then there is one more as uh, it's called superficial. Yolk is uh, in the center and the cleavage is outer surface of the animal. And that's of course here is a uh, zygote or parthenogenesis in most cases. Um, the arthropods are like that. We are talking about arthropods, you have to make it insects. So anyhow, and then the cells divide and divide and divide and eventually they form around. They are around like that. Um, then you should know I'm throwing at you the term protostome and deuterostome. Uh, remember, proto, it means first. Stome, it means mouth. So mouth first. And deuterostome, stome, it means mouth. And deuterostome, it means second. So um, we need to talk about that in heavy duty stuff. A lot of that I will talk about it, but that's just the definition I'll give you now. It will come up. Of course, I had to settle down and talk about the isolethethal uh, starfish and human. The amount of yolk is, uh, and the uh, cytoplasm is almost equal, iso, same, okay? Mesolethethal, uh, the uh, cytoplasm, uh, uh, and uh, the yolk is moderate amount, okay? Uh, Telolecithal, like birds, they have a lot of yolk, okay? And the cytoplasm is, you know, they're there, it's there. And central lecithal, like insects, the uh, yolk is in the center, just like I talked about it, and the cleavage occurs around the cell. Blastula is a whole mass of cells. I'm giving you the definitions. And blastocele is the space inside of the blastula 
we should, we should see. What is gastula? Having two layers of cells with an opening in vagination. I talked about it, a whole bunch of cells divide and divide and divide. So they invaginate, they come like this. And that's when that stage is called gastula. It will come up. Archentron is the embryonic gut. Okay. Uh, Silomic vesicles. Uh, you have the formation of silom. Uh, we'll talk about that um, in the lab, uh, in the uh, starfish bipinaria larva, okay, of the lab. Now, gastula is an embryo and has three germ layers, the ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm. Uh, if I ask you uh, guys, what is ectoderm, endoderm, what are the three germ layers? If you give me that definition, you lose points. I want the complete, I'll show you a diagram, it will come up. A complete definitions of ectoderm, endoderm, uh, mesoderm. I would like you to uh, see that. Diploblastic animals, it means you only have two, these two, ectoderm and endoderm. Okay. Triploblastic animals have all three of them. I'm going to write down T and E. Okay. So D, diploblastic has these two layers, ectoderm animals like starfish. Okay. And triploblastic animals, you and I, most of the animals in the animal kingdom are triploblastic. They have three gem layers, ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm. Okay, know the fate of uh, blastopore in uh, protostomes and geostome animals. We'll talk about that. Okay, uh, this is in case of human, if you guys are wondering what is going on, uh, fertilization, spermitary is the egg, then you have zygote, one cell, zygote is one cell, and then you have morula, which is a bunch of cells, and in, like a um, baseball or a golf ball, inside of it is full. Blastocyst is like a uh, tennis ball, okay, like a uh, soccer ball, inside of this hollow, blastocyst. Gastula is like a flat ball, that the, uh, the cells invaginate and they fold inward, and that would be a gastula. And I gave you the days, I gave you the numbers, ah, do not worry about them too much. Uh, so, uh, but for your information, if you have to know uh, that, then you do know it. And then you have embryo, which is eight weeks, and then you have fetus, which is uh, starts from nine weeks until the birth is called an embryo. But you, I would like you to know the order of it. You should know fertilization, zygote, of course, it's not part of the um, embryology, but morula, you should know that. After morula is blastula, after blastula is blastocyst. Uh, blastocyst is the term we reserve for human. The rest of the animal kingdom, we call them uh, blastula. And then you have gastula, uh, and then you have neurula, which I didn't mention it here, you have embryo, this. Okay, great. So, you know, we already talked about it. You saw the models that one cell becomes two cells, two cells become four cells, four cells becomes eight cells, eight cells becomes 16 cells, and so on and so forth. And then you have a ball of cells, which inside of it is full of cells. Then these ball of cells start dividing and divide more. And when they divide more and divide more, they become a ball of cells, which inside of it is hollow. That hollow space, of course, is a fluid field. It's not air space. It's not full of air. It's a fluid field. That space inside is called blastocele. Seal in your prefix suffixes means uh, space. So the whole structure here is called blastula. And in case of human, they call it blastocyst. I guess that's discrimination. <laughs> Nowadays, they call it equity. I don't know. Don't, I hope I'm not getting into trouble with anybody here. Uh, but um, so a blastula for animal kingdom, blastocyst for human. Okay. Anyhow, the cells, when you have a ball of cells like this, which inside of it is hollow, then the cell starts invaginate, okay? And when they invaginate, that is called gastula. 
I, remember, I'm imagining I'm folding my, my fingers from one end. I'm not doing it both ends. No. That's what, look at the diagram, is gas shiloh. So when the cells starts dividing, and the cells still dividing, the cells still dividing, okay? And when they still divide and divide and divide and invaginate in, inward, that's gas shiloh. Okay. Then that invagination occurs and occurs and goes all the way down to the other end of the ball of cells, okay? So this forms the gut. This is the archentron embryonic gut right here. This is the archentron embryonic gut, the red. If the animal, the opening, right, this opening, that opening right here is the mouth of the animal, and scientists tracked it and they found out that becomes the mouth, that animal is protostome. Remember that. If that opening becomes anus and that opening becomes mouth, the second opening becomes mouth, right? That animal is uterostome. Okay, so I talked about that and I will talk about coelom and other goodies later on. Of course, this, the outer surface, it becomes ectoderm. This is your endoderm. And right here is mesoderm. So let's talk about mesoderm and other goodies that's supposed to come. Yes. So if you look at this, you will see that um, this is protos on the left hand side, uh, lophotrochozoan. Let's not worry about it now. Um, and okay, on the left hand column is uh, you're looking at it is protosome animals and deuterosome on top and spiral cleavage. spiral cleavage, and these are radial, right? So protostome, deuterostome, uh, protostome, most protostome animals are spiral cleavage. They have spiral cleavage. Most deuterostome animals, they have radial cleavage. However, there is an exception. We human are deuterostome, deuterostome. It means mouth, second, but we are spiral cleavage. Uh, we are, um, she's a psyllis. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So no, we are not spiral cleavage. We are uh, rotational, okay, discoidal, you know that. Okay. So you have a blastula right here, blastula right here, same. Then invagination occur, you have gastula here, gastula here, and then you do have the, when the invagination occurs here, this becomes mouth, this becomes anus. So, and this becomes mouth, right? You guys are watching, and this becomes anus. That's the difference between protostome and deuterostome animal. As I said, most animals that are protostome, they're spiral cleavage, most animals that are deuterostome, they are Radial cleavage. Okay, he is telling you the same thing. I don't like it too much, but uh, let's go ahead and this is my favorite. This is the diagram I would like to harp on and talk about it. So here you already know this is gastula, right? So invagination occurred and then uh, I'm not concerned for now the blastopore becomes mouth or becomes anus. Um, anus. I'm not concerned with that. I want to talk about uh, coelom. Okay. So in the case of the animals and our kentron, all of these are coming back and we talked about it. This is the very first view you're looking at the far left-hand side. It's a longitudinal cut of the animal. The top, the middle one, you're looking at cross-section of the animal. And the last one, you're looking at the cross-section of the animal. You have one, two, three. So... Let's look at the longitudinal cut. In the longitudinal cut, if you have these cells, they come from mesoderm, middle layer of the animal, they are scattered, they call them schizocilus. Schizo, it means split. So the cells split a little bit from here, from this area, 
right here. And then they form a sac, silomic sac. And then of course, the mesoderm is completely surrounding that space, that space called silo. And then of course, this is mesoderm, right? Right? This is endoderm and this is ectoderm. Now, in case of entrocelous animals, entrocelous animals at the end of the gut, right here, the cell starts forming an out pocket. That's what they call it, entrocelous, out pocketing versus splitting. Schizocelous split, out pocketing, they are entrocelous. And of course, at the end product is same, at the end of the day, they form a sac, look, just like the top one, this sac inside of it have coelom, space field coelom. Uh, when I say space field coelom, it's a fluid field. Sorry about that. It's a fluid field. And that fluid field is called coelom. We do need to know this for the rest of semester. Every animal will talk about it. Um, oh, from exam number three, I guess. Yeah. Exam number three, we need to talk, we will talk, we'll come back to this again and again and again. So that's the difference between uh, schizocelous and intracellous animals. Going back, oh no, let me go back a little bit, right here, right here. So the in general, and there are exceptions, I gave you general, the animals that are protostome, they have spiral cleavage, they are she is a it doesn't mention the term she's a silas in there but the animals that are geostone they have radial cleavage they are entrocelous it's an exception we human are geostone but we are she's a silas Okay, that's another difference between schizocelous uh, and entrocelous here. We human are here. We are durosome on top, but we are schizocelous. It's an exception to the rule. Most animals in animal kingdoms are like that. If you are durosome, like starfish, it's a durosome, it's entrocelous. Earthworm is protostome, it is radial cleavage. It is schizocelous. Arthropod, schizocelous. I hope I'm making some sense. If you have any question, let me know. Then the other terminologies I would like to throw at you is metamorphosis, uh, sharp changes in embryonic development. So the, you will see a huge difference between the larva, like butterfly. You're familiar with butterfly. The larva is totally different than butterfly. In this case, this is a beetle. It's not a butterfly. Yes, I do know this is not a butterfly. This, I'm just giving you an example. Uh, the larva and, uh, and, and then the butterfly is different. The larva and the beetle is different. You will see that in other animals, but in case of human, we don't go under metamorphosis. I hope our brain, our mind goes under metamorphosis as we develop through our life. Uh, but, um, but physically, we do not from embryonic stages until the end, we are pretty much the same. Okay, this is what I want you guys to know. Um, Gastrula, uh, and we'll, uh, eventually we'll have three germ layers. You have ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm, and I'm listing some of the things, what ectoderm becomes, okay? It becomes brain and nervous system and becomes epidermis and associated structures like hairs, nails, so on and so forth, horn, Endoderm becomes these. I'm giving it more detail than in the previous slide. So if I ask you a question on your essay questions, I want you to list this for me. And of course, mesoderm, then you have somites. You see them in the chicks in the lab. Uh, chickens have somites. Somites becomes, uh, you know, your bones, your muscles, and so on and so forth. And then you have notochord, you have mesenchyme, 
which becomes bone cartilage dermis, um, the dermis layer of your skin, you studied that first exam. You have epidermis and underneath is dermis. Um, so um, dermis is from mesoderm. There was a statement like that in first exam. And I said, do not worry about that. And I did not ask any exam questions. About it. So this is what I want you to know, or what I want you to be able to recall for exam purposes. The parts of the brain, and in the lab, you're looking at cheek embryo. Of course, you see prosencephalon, telencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, rombencephalon. These are, they call it three, five, 10, three in embryo, uh, there are these three, okay, and then becomes five, these five, and then these five becomes ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's what they call it, three, five, ten. Um, oh, you should know this. Uh, we'll ask some questions. So, um, most of these this stuff, basal ganglion, we talked about it, olfactory, first exam. Uh, I, your sense of smell, uh, cerebrum, the whole brain right here with all four lobes is cerebrum. Pineal gland inside of the brain, thalamus inside of the brain, and not the lobes, hypothalamus, midbrain, um, say bellum in the back, you saw it, pons and medulla. So most all of these guys, um, you study them, you know about them from your previous classes. I'm circling the ones that you already know, uh, we already talked about. Uh, so um, I might ask you questions from I would. Okay, amniotes and uh, the amniotic eggs, reptiles, birds, and mammals, uh, they are amniotes, animals, they have amniotic fluid, the egg has amniotic fluid, and chorioallantoic membrane, the chorion and antoius are combined. Later on during envelope the development, these two are combined together. It's called uh, chorioallantoic uh, membrane. Okay. Um, amnion, as I said, is a fluid, is a sack of fluid that um, pretty much um, uh, it's for protection. Allantoius is the exchange of gases and nutrient uh, between the embryo and the mother. Chorion is another layer of uh, protection. Right here, you can see allantoius, a lot of blood vessels right here. So for exchange of nutrient and gases. But you have the embryo, you have chorion, you see one layer of fluid field uh, for protection. And then you have the amnion right here, uh, another set. When uh, quickly, when animals evolved, they came from sea. When the egg was in the sea, there was water around it. No problem. But when the animals came to the land, like reptiles, birds, and mammals, so the land was dry, they had to develop a way of protecting the embryo. And what happened, this fluid layers outside the animal was like a shock absorbance. If there's a pregnant woman and you push on it, um, not gently, if you're pushing on the fluid, it does not um, damage the, uh, the fetus, okay? So that's the idea of uh, these um, fluids outside of the embryo because of the uh, protection from moving from sea to the light. Hope all makes sense. Okay, formation of the coelom. Uh, she's a cilus and cilus. I did talk about that. Advanced chordates, uh, uh, they form, um, uh, they, ha uh, they have she's a cilus. We talked about that. Okay, let's talk about this one. This is a joke. I don't know you guys uh, laugh at my jokes or not. A little girl went up to his father, her father, and asked, uh, Dad, where did, did all of my intelligence come from? The father replied, Well, I don't know. He was reading his paper. You must have got it from your mother, cause I still have all of mine. <laughs> so, you know, that is not the case. You know that um, half of us is from our father and half from our mother. So anyhow. 
So let's talk about cloning here. Now we, I should finish the, uh, I, I still can go another 20 minutes, yeah. And that would be one hour or so. Um, so what happened in 1997, 96, 97, I'm forgetting now, these Scottish uh, scientists, they were for the first time, they were able to clone mammals. Before that, uh, we human could not clone mammals. We were able to do frogs, uh, you know, no mammals. So what, what they did, I'm gonna, first I'm gonna tell you what they did because nowadays it's all over the map. They are cloning animals. Um, the concept is pretty much same, but they're cloning them uh, differently, okay? So what they did, they took the mammary cells, which is 2N, it has all 54 chromosomes, right? And then they put them in a dish and then they took the egg from a black headed sheep and they removed the nucleus. And the nucleus of a black headed sheep has how many chromosomes? 54 divided by two, right? That is 54 divided by two. Boy, I'm putting myself in spot. Ah, come on, divided by two. Uh, 27, ah, come on, 27 chromosomes, right? So they removed that. And then they took, they took the nucleus with 54 chromosomes, they put it in an empty egg. And these are the parts you missed during the exam. Okay, so they took the mammary cells, the nucleus of the mammary cells and put it into the egg of the black headed sheep. And of course, remember, they removed the nucleus, but the mitochondria stayed there. Everything stayed there except the nucleus. They pass electric shock to it, this egg. They pass an electric shock to it because they say, scientists say, it's not been proven that when a sperm enters the egg, there is a shock, there is an electric shock. Nowadays, they do those shocks by salt or other things. They, as I said, the concept still stays in. And they let it grow in a dish, become a blastula, right? And then they put that blastula into the black-headed sheep, another sheep. Gestation period of the pregnancy time, they call it gestation. Period of, 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 of sheep is 152 days. Okay, then after 152 days, a white-headed sheep clone to this animal was born. And they call it, right here is that sheep. They call it Dolly because of Dolly Parton. They took the mammary cells from uh, the sheep, uh, the white headed sheep, and uh, they call it Dolly um, because of Dolly Parton. It's not a joke, I'm serious. That's why, read the literature. Read why they call this uh, the sheep back in 1997, Dolly. Anyhow, so um, that is what's happening. Now, quickly um, to say a few things. Nowadays, they, they take the whole mammary cells and with the cytoplasm and everything, they put it inside of the egg. Uh, the electric shock, they use salt. Uh, they put the uh, egg in a salt solution and they take it out, uh, put it in normal uh, environment and they have the blastula. Have they cloned human or not? I don't know. If some country does it, um, it's doable. If some country does it, um, they're smart not to announce it to the world because they will be condemned. Or some scientist who is doing it. Ah, okay, couple of terminologies. I have 27 here. <laughs> 27 pairs, but anyhow. Uh, or five, 152 days or five months. Uh, totipotent, totipotence refers to the cells that they can become the entire organism like egg. Egg is a good example of totipotent because egg, of course, with the help of sperm can become, or in this case, without the help of sperm, it can become the entire organism. That's what a totipotent is, the term totipotent. And we will see. Um, then in your bone marrow, as you know, your original red blood cells and white blood cells came from one stem cell and that's, they call that stem cells, okay? 
So that this, what they are showing in here, but I took off and uh, shown to you, it's called stem cell. Okay, so um, the, um, there are, there are two types of, well, let me talk about multipotent or pluripotent stem cells. The multipotent stem cells or pluripotent stem cells, they are the cells, just like the one in your bone marrow, can become a variety of cells. They can become red blood cells, white blood cells, okay? So they are multipotent or pluripotent cells. Now, when we talk about, um, <clears throat> when we are talking about the um, embryo, this is a blastula, as you already know. They take the cells in here and they put it, uh, different chemicals in a dish, pitcher dish, and they put different chemicals to it and they get different variety of cells and they get other type of cells. They get liver cells, neuron, cardiac muscle cells. This route, this is called embryonic stem cell Embryonic stem cells, you have a, a scientists have a better luck to get these end product cells from, these end product cells from. When they take the, my cells from my bone marrow and put it in a dish and they add chemicals to it, soups, and they want to make different cells, the luck is not as great. It's not easy, put it this way. Okay, so the adults, adult stem cells are not, e cannot easily become the other cells, like liver cells. They take, they take my bone marrow cells and they might wanna make liver cells. I've been drinking alcohol all my life. Now I do not have good liver. They wanna make liver for me. So they take my bone marrow cells. That's not gonna be easy. But if they take an embryo cells and they want to make liver cells, that's easy. However, they take that embryo cells and they make liver cells and they want to put it in me, my body will reject it, as you know. So it's better for the science and technology to improve. I'm not supporting what Bush said, uh, President Bush, I'm referring to. Uh, it's better to have a stem, adult stem cell uh, this is called, this right here is called adult stem cell, right? Okay. Um, it's better for me, uh, but for science and technology, you know, the embryonic stem cells. And nowadays, uh, parents, they uh, freeze their uh, placenta cells and they freeze uh, the fluid the cells, the, the embryonic fluid, there are cells in there to... Um, you know, all sort of them, and they pay money to be kept frozen in case if the baby has a problem later on in life, um, take care of it. I don't know. Um, I'm not poor, it. I'm not pro it. I'm not anti it. It's a personal opinion. Okay. Um, this is the 33 hours chicken embryo we have, and then I put it in here because over the years it got lost. And that's what I would like you to know. I think over the lab, I went over and here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. Um, that would be the, uh, this would be the beginning of the material for next exam.